think more retail companies or retail sites have not implemented machine learning or artificial intelligence? Uh, well, I think it uh, has something to do with the leverage because uh, small companies don't have a lot of revenue and it assigns adds like several percent to that revenue, like five or ten percent, for example. And uh, the science itself is quite expensive because you have to pay salaries, you have to store data somewhere, you have to rent processing power to compute models. It's like buying your own train in underground yes. uh, versus buying a ticket to a first class uh, train. So because of that, small mm. companies just can't afford to buy uh, data science team because this added, added lift wouldn't cover the cost of data science. Mm -hmm. And there are some risks because uh, it's hard to hire data science people who um, know that what they're doing. At the beginning you don't have data scientists, you don't have tech, like, great tech, tech people, and you can hire like immature people. Some people who will be to you and uh, you will realize that yeah. after half a year. And there are lots of startups, like immature startups, like new buy startups, which are like not just started and they are just selling that they don't have actually and you get bad experience about machine learning and then you think like oh, it doesn't yeah. work like you feel your wrong first impression yeah. yeah yes it's it's uh, because i mean we were interviewing some guys and for then some uh, girls and uh, they were like some a few cases it was like um they couldn't write a four cycle in python but before that they were like putting some noodles on my ears we, we say this way in russian like <laughs> they're lying to you i, don't, I don't, you. don't think that uh, Expression is this in English. No, okay. Putting some noodles on your ears? Putting some noodles on your ears. Like, okay. Some and, you know, yeah, bullshit. okay, some bullshit. And uh, they were like bullshit like gods. I mean, I fell in love with them like in 40 minutes. Like, oh my god, you did that in like uh, Disney. Like, you made the commentation system faster by 50 times. Like, you were explaining all that stuff. But the problem was like when we went to coding exercise. It was like uh, somebody. I mean, my grandmother calls in Python better than this. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> On the other hand, yeah, you can't really be competitive uh, if you don't provide really cool experience to users uh, on your website or uh, uh, for your customers. Uh, because it's not only about revenue, but on the other hand, if we measure lifetime value for users, experience is really is what really matters. What are the biggest <laughs> challenges you run into developing algorithms for retail? So that they are, uh, the data is very time sensitive. Like the trends are changing always. Mm -hmm. Like if you compare to, I don't know, computer vision uh, field, this is like rarely the case that you have, that you have to update uh, your models, I don't know, daily or weekly. Uh, you usually just can train it once and uh, keep it for once working and working well. And here, uh, like, <clears throat> you must consider uh, the time component in your data, and it actually brings like it may may not be seen from the from the first glance, but it actually brings a lot of engineering and uh, um, engineering difficulties and problems, and uh, from the data science and modeling perspective as well. I, like I guess uh, the biggest problem is users. But they are really like special. <laughs> in some way. In some way. Something yeah. very, very, very in, in, in a good way. In a good way. Yeah, I will have them. The ones that enter like uh, iPhones and they, they scroll 10 pages into the listing to click the only one Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> so yes, some, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, there are some like what the clicks. Yeah. That's what I hate the most because. Um, usually when you collect the data, you assume that it's ground truth. If something is clicked, it's relevant. If something is skipped and it's above the last, the last clicked item, it's not relevant because it's, it was seen by user, but it was we, we can assume for, for, for certain, with certain level of confidence that that's Yeah, true. yeah, but that confidence is, like, mm -hmm. is, is really low because people are liking what the clicks. When you show some the relevant results, for example, uh, I've seen that like uh, for some uh, for some results uh, uh, in our previous company in recommendations we were showing uh, some uh, some really relevant stuff and it was funny like toilet paper for some food 
recommendations. Yes. People were clicking it because they were like, what, what, what is that? Like, well, how is it related? I would click it, like, I'm interested. I mean, I'm surprised. You just, you just break the banner blindness to the people because they have advertisement blindness. They are not like, I've seen some advertisements uh, that are like covering the whole screen and I don't recall what was there like five seconds ago, five seconds after the fact. And uh, maybe when you are giving something like that gets attention, like relevant results, it can get positive feedback. And that's the problem because it's reinforced by the feedback and your algorithms are trying to like, make something out of that noise. Like another thing uh, which uh, like complicates uh, applied data science is that uh, this hotel thing is actually multi objective. You have this conversion thing, you want to use them. But you have, yeah. Yeah, you have KPIs from machine data, some brands' interests, you have like stock thing which you want to optimize the proper way, and it's like you need to keep everything in mind. Yeah. Uh, if you're a retailer, what is the starting point for ML and AI? Okay. Oh. <laughs> if you have some, if you no, don't have a lot of data, or like not a ton of data, you're definitely not Google, customer, right? Uh, no, I mean, you should use some vendor, probably not, like, not talking about for, us, but for, the, for the party, uh, using, uh, yeah, preferring something not in house is crucial because if you don't have a ton of data, uh, you can like buy some data because vendors are usually trying to serve you the best results, right? Any vendors, our competitors are making their like best. And uh, if they realize that can they can't serve good results because of lack of data, they will transfer some data to you, right? Yeah. And I basically you are buying yeah. <coughs> some I think, data. I think as a first step, don't think about uh, hiring uh, one guy or girl uh, who will implement you like some fancy algorithms, some cool deep neural networks or reinforcement learning agents. Just focus focus on a classic software development. Like learn how how to collect your data, how to properly like to how to properly access it, and hire a guy mm -hmm. or a girl uh, who will be able to access it or even set up all this process and then do some business intelligence, just basically a data analysis on top of it. Because like this thing, uh, doing business intelligence, doing some analytics or on top of data that you already have, not the, like doing some predictions, uh, it's already a very very big win. So you, you can give you can get a lot of a lot of profit from it. Like from the data you already have, yeah. like without training the complex and fancy models and trying to predict the future, trying to predict mm -hmm. the actions of mm -hmm. the users. Mm -hmm.